Hi, I'm Sheriff Matt Kendall, and I'm here today with Brent Blazer, our Emergency Services Coordinator for the Sheriff's Office. Thank you, Sheriff Kendall. It's great to be here. First and foremost, we like to stress that no one alerting system is perfect. Sometimes it's human error. Sometimes it's the limitation of the technology, which is out of our control. The systems we're going to discuss today are used redundantly, which means we, do, we don't expect every person to get every notification. Our hope and goal is that if we offer five ways to notify you of an emergency, you'll get at least one or two of those with enough information to allow you to make the best decision for the safety of you and your loved ones. Let's take a moment to talk about what took place during the incidents of August 26, 2020, specifically the East Fire, the Gravel Fire, and the Springs Fire. As you may recall, the initial message contained an error which prevented recipients from accessing the map information. Our staff worked quickly to send additional messaging in order to correct the error and ensure that they had the best information possible to safely evacuate the, re the area. Remember, our, our concern was that this fire had the potential to quickly spread to residential areas, injure the public, destroy homes, and could block evacuation routes. As I mentioned earlier, we have several different ways to reach people, so while the text information issue was being resolved, we had additional information sent out on various social media sites. Yes, we understand not everyone is on social media, but again, it's about redundancy, and our goal is to get everyone notified in some way. Additionally, the notifications were broadcast using federal alerting systems known as the Wireless Emergency Alert, WIA, and the Emergency Alert System, EAS. Simply put, additional messaging was sent to cell devices within the area, as well as distributed by television and radio networks. I'd like to stress to you that it takes an enormous amount of coordination in order to develop alert and warning messaging. The entire process starts with the initial call for service received by dispatch personnel. Dispatch staff then notify law and fire personnel to respond to the incident. These professionals then must travel to the impacted area, assess the situation, and quickly determine the risk to our community. If evacuations are necessary, they quickly map out the potential or develop a plan of action and transmit this information back to dispatch so they can craft assorted messages that can be inputted into a, our alerting warning systems such as Mendo Alerts, Nixle, Wireless Emergency Alerts, the Emergency Alert System, and social media platforms. We all also strive to translate the messaging before it's distributed. As you can see, this takes a lot of teamwork from assorted partners. During this entire process, dispatch continues to field additional calls for service as well as work against the clock. Time is truly the enemy in these situations because we need to provide families with the most time possible in order to evacuate safely. This is why sometimes the initial information may be incomplete and unfortunately may contain typos. We strive for perfection. However, our initial alert and warning message may be sparse of the information some people may want. I'm going to take a break and get some water, and I'll be right back. We recently received a lot of questions on our Facebook page and other social media platforms regarding the alert and warning system. So Brent and I were going to have a quick discussion and try to work out some of these questions and get some answers for you. So Brent, one of the questions that we received is, why did my neighbor get a different message than I did? Well, Sheriff Kendall, it really has to do with, you know, what systems are you uh, registered for? So are you registered for Nixle? Are you registered for Mender Alerts? What preferences did you ask for in the aspect that did you want it to go to text message? Did you want an email? Did you want a voice message? Uh, and then also we used multiple alerting systems. So some people might have gotten the WIA, the Wireless Emergency Alert, uh, if they were within that area, and they may confuse that with what looks like to be a text message. Okay, well that kind of segues way into this next question. Next question is, why did I get multiple messages? Again, it's mostly how they were uh, registered, so they may be registered more than one times. Um, also, we buy information from tele utility companies, so uh, your business might be registered multiple times, and those phones might be uh, forwarded to your cell number. Oh, okay. So you could be doing 
registered as an individual, plus your business lines are registered independently. Okay. Uh, next question, why did my phone make a loud, horrible noise when I got an alert? And can you send me alerts without that noise? Uh, so those are really associated, the, 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 the light and then the sound effect is associated most likely with the wireless emergency alert system. So those are WIAs? Those are WIAs. And those are a federal system, and we don't have any control over that. Okay. And then why should I sign up for multiple Nixel zip codes? Because sometimes we actually target information and, and uh, messaging to certain areas. And if you have either multiple residents or you want to know what's going on in other areas, or maybe you want to file, follow more than one organization, it would behoove you to go in there and register for those, that, those pieces of information. Okay, so if you were living in, say, Potter Valley, but working in Calpella, could you sign up for both of those so that you had your home and your business covered? Definitely. Okay. Do I need to sign up for Nixle and Everbridge, and what's the difference? You don't have to sign up for both, but it is a, a best practice. And really what it gives us the ability to do, because both systems do text messaging, emails, uh, voice messages, uh, it allows us to better target messaging. So if you're somebody who lives on the coast and we have graphics already designed for uh, those in the tsunami inundation area, that would be a better way to get messages to those individuals to make sure that we know you're within this certain area. Oh, okay. uh, whereas if you're just registered by zip code, the best we can do is notify an entire area of zip code. Okay, okay. Um, do all phones receive alerts in the same way? No, they don't. Fortunately, uh, phones, there's many different makes, models, and series, not to mention cell phone providers. So some aren't capable to get the certain number of characters uh, for text messages. Some won't maybe do a hyperlink per se. Uh, so there's a lot of different um, abilities of the cell phone in your, in your pocket. Uh, so that means that we have to develop messages in multiple different ways, different character limits and, and sizes and such, uh, in hopes that you're going to get at least one of those messages and be aware of what's going on. Okay. Um, so if we've missed anything or didn't cover something that, that you have questions to, please put a message in the comments below. If, if we missed anything at all, please let us know and we'll do our best to get those answered for you. Thank you. Thank you.